hey guys welcome back to my channel happy to be here with you happy to have you and from the title you already know i'm back in another competition your girl can't help herself you know if you remember last semester i was in the trial advocacy competition and it was my first time here in the university first semester and i decided to give it a shot and i ended up coming um second my teammate and i and i lost best advocate by one point or two whichever one i don't remember right now but i decided to go for it again which i already did tell you and now you're gonna see us do negotiation now the negotiation competition is gonna take a completely different format and it's not adversarial per se unless you make it so which is not really in your best interest as the advocate or your client's best interest most times but um I want to tell you a little bit more about it and i want you to see this journey i have a new partner once again i didn't know anyone who was also interested and wanted to do this with me so i signed up and they assigned me a partner once more and i'm trusting that the lord um as he usually does doesn't do things by you know chance and that everything here concerning me is ordered and so my partner is the partner i'm supposed to have he's chinese and i want you to also meet him and to hear a little bit of what he has to say let's go we went to the preliminary rounds and we actually um, made it to the quarter final and uh, i just wanted to get to this point before i started vlogging it just to make sure that there was actually something to vlog uh, you know, you're gonna want to share myself certain way. <laughs> so now that we're in the quarterfinal, then it would be semifinals, then it would be finals. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and keeping hope alive and well and kicking and healthy that your girl's gonna do it through the help and the provision of God. Yeah. Okay, guys, so I'm here with my partner. This is you. Hi. Hey, you. Can you tell Hi. them a little bit about where you're from? I'm from China and I'm really happy to work with the AC. I Aww. really enjoy this experience. Me too. Is this your first negotiation competition? Right. This is my first time. It's my first time too. Yeah. So, but I, I believe that you is a silent giant. Like he is so intelligent. Oh, really? Yes. And I how really you, appreciate. yeah, the way you're able to look at the facts and just pick up on certain things and be like, mm-mm. Why are they doing this? I yeah, really appreciate that. <laughs> Period. And I like that. So that means that with my little skills, my administrative skills, you know, making sure that our arguments are organized, making sure that I also, you know, look over to see whatever he's doing and if I can put my two cents in, stuff like that. I believe that the both of us together, we should do well in this competition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in today's case that we're working on, we have a client we're representing um, a couple. They have two kids, they have a dog, and um, basically it's a landlord and tenant case, and we're representing the tenants. So in this case, we have, um, have two issues. Yeah, we have two issues really and truly. Right. So the landlord, firstly. So the landlord need to obey. They have to waive our client's rent for two months. Yeah, so the landlord needs to waive our client's rent for two months because he did not do necessary repairs. So there was mold on the wall and their daughter has a respiratory illness. And you know that in stuff like that, it's not good for your health and stuff like that. And the second thing that he needs to do? They need to repair the house. Yes, and they also need to actually do the repairs on the house. So my client had reached out to the landlord who did not respond to her. But then like three months after, two months? Three months. Three months after they sent a repair guy who spent only 15 minutes just looking around the house and then decided that there was no need for repairs. So our client is minded to get an actual, a different repairman to come in and to actually do what the first person should have done. So that's what she wants. She also wants a discount on the rent right. for the months that the repairs were um, not done. And then she wants a payment plan to right. pay the discounted rate over about three to four months, depending on what they agree on. 
So right now we're just meeting. The competition is in a couple hours. We're just meeting to go over our arguments and to distribute how, you know, the work to see what you will say, to see what I would say. And so that there's a balance, you know, so it's not just one person talking around. I think the first uh, round- Just to struggle for our client's interest. Yes, to struggle for our client's interest. And in the first round, you was like, Oh, I think your English is better than mine, so you can go ahead and talk. But actually, I'll try. <laughs> actually, I, I think that they actually want to hear from you. Right. And yeah. I think they actually appreciate your input because mm -hmm. it's well thought out and it's thought provoking too. So I want to distribute the work in such a way that um, there are portions when you're just talking right. and I'm just supporting like, mm hmm, mm hmm. And then, then the roles yeah. can reverse and I'll talk and then you'll support. But either way, I want them to be hearing from both of us. Right. All right. So in terms of, oh, yeah. so you have your arguments figured out. I want you right. to tackle the repairs and I'll tackle the back rent. So do you have your arguments for repairs? For repairs? Mm -hmm. I will argue in your flow, they should do that. Mm -hmm. And this, and the, I, I believe this provision could also appear in their lease, but we have no information about that lease. Yeah, they didn't have one. That's why I had mentioned it earlier that the first lease for the year when the mother was alive, that lease ended, and then they, would, they became holdover tenants. Right. They didn't leave. But they kept paying um, rent monthly, so they have a legal right to be there because the landlord kept receiving that rent right. monthly. Yeah. So do, do you remember I also mentioned a uh, secret that we need to avoid to talk about? Yeah, the respiratory illness being asthma. We don't want them to know that it's actually asthma. Yeah. Because we may do, don't play it. Yeah, because there is no significant relationship between asthma and the mold or damp. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have asthma, so... Oh, you have an asthma? Yeah. I understand, like, when the atmosphere is too wet and when it's too hot and, like, smoky, foggy, stuff like that, it will affect how easily you're able to breathe. Okay. Yeah. If and we can actually I, research it so we have facts, if, too. If, if in real practice, maybe you can say that, but I'm not really sure whether we can do that here because the judge don't like uh, new facts that doesn't that that did not appear in the information they give to us. Yeah, but it did appear. It appeared. She told us that she has asthma. She just doesn't want the other side to know, and it is scientifically 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 proven that moles on the wall can actually trigger asthma symptoms, leading to shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing. Um, and other allergies. That's that's known. But do do you know that we have we have one sentence say that she suffers. suffers from severe. This is the general facts, but for right. the um, confidential facts, mm, asthma. Right, I know that. Mm -hmm. The problem. This is a and the mold in the home will make things worse because they trigger asthma symptoms. Yeah, but they, they are still worried. They, they are worried that, so this is opinion of the couples. Yeah, it maybe, is. Maybe not the mm -hmm. scientific discovery here. Yeah, that's true. And in general facts, there was one sentence say that she suffers from respiratory condition, which has only been aggravated by the current situation of the apartment. Right, so, so her respiratory condition has been aggravated. Right, mm -hmm. has been aggravated, but the, we didn't define the current situation of the apartment. If you just uh, see general facts, you may believe that current situation of the apartment is mold. Is, is, yeah, it's mold. Mm -hmm. But actually, they have a dog. So, mm. the current situation of the apartment may mean the dog here. But that's their argument to bring up. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a really 
So mm. if they bring that up though to say if your daughter has been triggered, it could be because I see dog hair. Like, what do you mean? Your repairman only spent fifteen minutes and he wasn't able to 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 acknowledge what right. he specializes in, but he was able to see. Right. Is he a dog expert? Right. We we need to pretend that we know we we know nothing about a dog. Yeah. So basically, we, we can play it off as it just being accusations. Right. And uh, because. But even though we are in a better position in this round, but I think that what we need to do is to defend, especially defend the secret of the dog. Mm -hmm. Is uh, I think this is the key to win this round. Yeah. Because we, because the landlord just acted, just action after, just action one month and a half after the notice. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a late move. And they send an um, irresponsible repairman. Mm -hmm. This is too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is really terrible. And, and we, we are in the advantage of the maybe ethics. But we need to, uh, we must defend the secret or not. It's really important to me. Yeah. So you're going to talk about the repairs. That means that the secret of the dog is yours to keep. Excuse me? I'm saying you're going to talk about the repairs. I want you to lobby for the repairs, which means that the secret of the dog yeah. is yours to avoid and to keep in our client's interest. If they ask us, uh, they, uh, the, do the tenants raise the dog? How do you respond? If though? Do, do the tenants raise a dog? How would I answer? I'm not understanding how what, what a dog has to do with the mold that's on the, the wall and the back rig that we're trying to establish. Oh, because my repairman said that he saw a dog here on a chair. Right. Your repairman is specialized in um, knowing whether pipes need to be repaired or not. Yet still, he spent 15 minutes, and in his area of specialty, he overlooked what he came to see, but he had time to see that there were dog hairs on the coach. And you ask them, you ask them, I, because the repairman just uh, look around just for 15 minutes, and he didn't even watch the living room without actually inspecting the ceiling. So is the repairman. A certified repairman, mm -hmm. right? Well, and did he really come on the job to repair or to check if there were any need to repair, or did he come to scout out the apartment? Right. Mm. Then, if they ask a question, you ask the question about the repairman. Mm -hmm. This is a good bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we have our general facts. The general facts is what both teams know. And the general fact is that, you know, the tenant was there. She called in the landlord. The landlord did not come, but sent a repairman um, a month and a half after he was supposed to send it because by law, he's supposed to do it um, within 30 days. Then we have a con confidential fax and the confidential fax is what my team alone knows and we're supposed to avoid telling the other team that because it works against our case. And of course, the other team would have confidential fax as well. I promise you that every attorney has that one client that does what they're not supposed to do. However, we need to know if you do what you're not supposed to do because that's the only way we're gonna be able to represent you well. And this is why we tell our clients don't lie because the opposing counsel comes with something to bam us hmm? and kicks our case out. You can't blame us for malpractice and you can't blame us for not representing you to the best of our abilities because we can only rep give us give off the best of what we have right and the best of what we have has to do with the information that you provide so this is this is just a plug for any client anyone at all that feels as though you would engage an attorney um anytime in the future or even if you're about to and you're contemplating do i tell them this or whatever, even if it's a criminal case and you are guilty you have the duty to let your attorney know everything. That's the only way we can provide the best assistance.
so we're winding down to the time when we're ready to start. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel energetic. Energetic? Yeah. Okay, so you had a look at um, some of our competitors and they're, they're not looking easy at all. That's the truth. Yeah, because this is not the second round. Yeah. Nothing could be easy. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Point, we will handle that. I'm realizing that it's mostly males. Like, if you look behind me, like, the females that you're seeing at the table are just um, managing the table. Like, that's where you go to sign in, blah, 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 blah. But, like, everybody else... I'm like one of two females in this competition. <laughs> I, feel, I feel, am I the only competitive female out there? You should be confident. I should be confident. Women power, girl power, yeah. Yeah, really present, yeah. <laughs> You guys have your letter? You guys brought your letter card back? Yeah, we did. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Who are you? I'm actually vlogging. Do you mind being in the vlog? Oh, no, no, what do you want me to talk about? Hello. Just say hey. You're I'm in this competition too, right? No, I'm being with it. Okay, so I'm the only female here. Yeah. See, I thought she was in the competition. <laughs> don't you? I'm like literally the only female here. I don't know if I should be happy or sad. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. We represent um, Oscar and Julie. No matter how's everyone doing tonight? Doing well, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. All right, and, we so and we represent Mr. Melvin, the uh, landlord in the matter, um, and we're looking to, you know, avoid trial and kind of reach an equitable and uh, agreeable settlement, hopefully, with tonight. So um, we kind of just wanted to start off by expressing our client wants to express remorse, you know, for the um, situation that's going on in the apartment, and we kind of just wanted to uh, ask how your family's doing, um, mm -hmm. you know, the apartment seems to be you know pretty expensive for the area so we kind of just wanted to see how your family's doing and anything like that so we actually appreciate that actually um my clients they are not 100 percent happy just yet but i'm hoping that at the end of tonight's negotiation she may feel happy with whatever mm -hmm. results we come up with um but other than that it's just a matter of expediting you know getting the repairs done if we so agree tonight and other matters that we will bring up tonight before we continue though i just wanted to say that co-counsel and i we have full reign to go ahead and negotiate on behalf of our client just wanted to make sure that you two also have that yeah yeah, yeah. yep okay and then one last thing before i hand over to co-counsel here i have a confidentiality agreement that's just standard anything that's discussed tonight will be confidential and will be without prejudice for any future negotiation or proceedings that may happen as a result and just ask if you could have to um affix your signature to that co-counsel and i already done so as well uh okay you mean discussing like outside of with our clients yes. yes okay um before we start negotiating last time yes yeah just to make sure okay. that whatever information here remains here okay well i mean uh, any you know in the, we are hoping to reach a settlement here, but in the event that you know we can and have to set a settlement for a, a later date to you know reconvene with our client, obviously you know that will go beyond the scope of tonight's understanding. So mm -hmm. we'd still be able to go back and discuss anything with our client on a later date, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then as you affix your signatures. Just so that we understand, um, co counsel and I, we had an agenda that was set out um, that we believe will help us move on in a productive manner. So okay. we wanted to start with uh, repairs and then to move to um, the back rent that is owed. Do you have any discrepancies? Yeah, sounds good. All right, so yeah. co counsel. So I'm, I'm going to take first to introduce you know, what you illustrate the facts for so me. So about three months ago, tenant noticed the water marks on the ceiling. So the, and there was water damage all over the ceiling of the living room, and mold was starting to grow to some of the nearby walls. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, just in the interest of time, I think we're, I mean, unless you disagree, I think we're all agreeable to, you know, the, the factual situation. So, I mean, just in the um, I will, I will introduce you the facts to make sure that you will not make any disagreement. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, can, yeah, keep going. 
And the tenant comes and like notify the landlord and now he that he should control and repair the water damage. Nevertheless, he did not respond. It was not until a month and a half after the tenant noticed that the repairman showed up at the tenant's home. We did him just 15 minutes without actually inspecting the tenant. The repairman concluded that no repairs were necessary. Tenants were incredibly worried about the health issues that the water damage may cause to the family. So much humanity can lead to lips that may cause the children to sleep or more that could affect the family's respiratory health. Their daughter Riley suffers from asthma. She suffers from a severe respiratory condition which has only been avoided by the current situation of the home. Right, and, and so I guess our first question is, you know, we uh, understand that there was, as you said, uh, some water damage on the ceiling. So I guess our first question would be, did your client have, you know, notice of this before, like any, uh, was there anything that your client was doing in the apartment that would have contributed to the water damage on the, uh, the ceiling to the stair lighting? Our client defined the water damage about three months ago. Right. And we have two issues, the first one is to repair the Water damage, and the second one is to pay the two months rent we held. Right. So this is our client proposal for today's negotiation. Right. So, and I guess our client is just concerned with you know if your client did anything in the apartment that would have contributed to the water damage. No, there was nothing. No. Okay. Um, so I take it, ideally, your client wants to stay in the apartment. Definitely. Okay. No. Is there any room on, to move on that at all? They definitely want to stay, or is that just is, is that within your discretion to decide? So, so is there the possibility that they would leave? All right. So based on our instructions, she and her family would prefer to stay okay, so in the apartment um, at the same rate of rent. Mm -hmm. But if whatever we have discussed tonight, we cannot reach to a positive conclusion, then definitely she would have to move to an, another neighborhood because the safety and the health of the well-being of her children come first. Right. Of course. Um, and, and kind of just setting the you know factual understanding of the water damage just a little bit further. So there was nothing that your client conducted or did in the apartment that contributed to the water damage. But when they uh, did reach out to our client, did your client express the severity or the urgency of the water damage and especially the, um, the health situation of your uh, client's daughter? Was that expressed to the, uh, the landlord? Okay, so we have no instructions as to whether or not our client did anything to contribute to the water damage, mm -hmm. but just um, based on general knowledge, based on the mold, based on where the damage is in the ceiling, I highly doubt that, that it, as a matter of probability, that that would be possible in this scenario. Um, as a matter of expressing respiratory illness and things like that, um, I don't believe that it was at the forefront of my client's mind, simply because she alerted the landlord the moment she knew that this was definitely not something that she could control. Not okay. only that, um, she also waited and waited for a response. And it wasn't until like a month and a half that a repayment just, sh a repayment just showed up to do. Yes, we, we understand the severity of the situation. We do apologize that it did take so long. We, when our client Melvin heard of the mold issue, he, he did immediately contact the repairman. The repairman just wasn't available for, for too long, certainly. Um, but we just want you to know that he did take it seriously. Um, so you mean your so you mean your client to notice the our client have sent the same uh, message and they and your client to tell the repairman immediately after receive the notice, right? Yes. yes, the repairman was just away on vacation. So and he's the repairman who normally services the apartment. He's familiar with the building. He's been there since we've owned the building for ten years. So he is the go to guy. So we kind of have to go to him when there's an initial issue like this. But we do apologize that it takes so long. We understand that you don't want mold in the apartment. We know that Riley's got a respiratory issue. Since you do want to stay though, ideally our client would like back rent. Um, that being said, we would be willing to make some offers to just 
a good situation. So no problem. Um, and we will definitely get to the back right because we want to stay. But just before we jump there, I just want um, us to settle on this matter as yeah. to whether or not your assuming liability for the repairs and that case will actually be done. Right. Because I believe that even if the repairman was away and there was lapse in time, that had there been proper communication, perhaps we could have engaged the services of another repairman who was certified based on standards. Well, I mean, we do acknowledge that there was a, a lapse in time. However, as Peter said, the repairman that uh, our client did reach out to understands the building, and you know, given uh, our client's you know concern and awareness for you know the safety of the tenants in the building, uh, he wanted to call someone that he knew that he could trust and rely on an opinion for. So that does you know to our client explains the. Uh, the lapse in time, um, however, we do acknowledge that he, uh, yes. you know, might have. I mean, to be words. fair to my clients as well, mm -hmm. the lapse in time is not necessarily the issue, it's the lack of communication. Mm -hmm. That's the sure. first thing. And then the second thing is, um, I don't think based on standards of professionalism that you necessarily need someone who knows the building in order to conduct repairs as a repair person. I believe that any person who is trained in that field professionally would be able to take a look at a, a water leak, would be able to take a look at a building and just be like, okay, this is where the problem is stemming from, this is how we fix it. Um, since you understand, as you express, your client understands that health and safety of not just two adults, but two children are at risk, then the lapse in time with the usual repairman the proper thing to do to preserve the beauty of care would have been to engage someone else. Okay, I understand your concerns. We are not at liberty to admit any sort of liability as far as like a timeline goes. We understand that the mold, is, no one wants mold in their apartment. And I mean, we're, we're also comfortable, and our client's comfortable saying if you are willing to stay in based on whatever offer that we reach today, that you know, communication won't be an issue in the future. Yeah, and, and on that note, that's no one's denying that there was poor communication. No one's denying that there shouldn't be mold in the apartment. That's that is taken for granted. That's taken for granted. We're not denying that. What we want to do is reach a resolution. So uh, in that vein of communication and adequately assessing a mold issue, mm -hmm. I have an offer for you. Would you be willing to hear one right now? Offer concerning the repairs? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so since your client has expressed interest in staying. Mm -hmm. Our client would like some back rent, and we can discuss that number. But as this initial offer stands, our client would like some back rent. Our client is willing to provide a dehumidifier to immediately address the situation. Um, he will call the initial repairman who came, but he is also certainly open to getting a second opinion, having another repairman come in, evaluate the situation, and making repairs so long as the repairs are like reasonable and not just like completely like inflated. Yeah, that's not, and also it would be uh, mutually agreed upon, you know, between both parties and the repairman that, you know, we're both agreeable to. Right, like also maybe, keeping my cost. Right, someone with maybe like a local reputation who has just a good book of business. But basically, some back rent, dehumidifier, second opinion. No and if that sounds okay to you, I mean, is that something your client would be open to? Definitely, but I want us to deal with the issues separately because okay. the scenarios are separate. So let's talk about, once again, the repairs first. Okay. So you're willing to offer a humidifier immediately. Right. And then also, um, to call in the initial repairman, we wouldn't be minded to do that. We'd rather someone with um, a different person to give a second opinion because he just took 15 minutes and just, then just decided that no repairs are needed. Um, and I'm going to assume on behalf of your client that the repairman that he waited so long to show up for that he actually did what he was supposed to do based on professional standards. So if based on what was supposed to happen in 15 minutes, despite all the evidence that was there, he assumed or concluded that there was no damage and that no repair was needed, we don't, we don't necessarily want him to be the person to come back. Right, and, and I think that's why we're offering to bring yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying that I'm accepting the offer on the table so long as it, as it is not the first person but the second person, along mm -hmm. with the dehumidifier. So can we agree with that? Yeah, I mean, and would you bear the liability to pay for the second person to 
Yeah. Well, yeah, any repair is just fall on with the land. Yeah. So. And, and again, as long as they're, you know, sort of reasonable, reasonable and, and the, uh, similar to the uh, cost of the original so power client, you just want to a comfortable and stay environment. Sure. But just on that point though, mm -hmm. um, because we said that it's the same impairment that has been with you for the past 10 years, it's quite possible that you may have had some special agreement that surprise that um, engaging a second opinion from a new person may not give. How would we remedy that? Well, I think if, it's, if we're agreeing on mutually agreed upon third party to uh, check the repairs of the apartment, I mean, I think if, if we can both agree to it at a later time, find that person and agree to it at a later time, uh, I, I think it, it's our clients, you know, we can discuss the cost of the later time, I think, as long as it's mutually, the parties agreed upon. Right, like we're agreeing to like a second opinion and a quote, like the mm -hmm. other preparer will come, give a quote, if it's like insane, we'll have to come back to the negotiating table, but I'm sure it won't be, we'll get a reasonable repairman, and if it's a reasonable price and a quote, we'll, we'll go from there. Perfect. Okay. So that's agreed upon. Um, now let's jump to the repairs. Um, or the rent? The rent, I'm yeah, sorry. Sure. Thank you for that. All right, so my client was paying the full rent at 1150 even for um, the moments, or the two months, where she was not enjoying the benefits of having a safe, habitable home for her family. And the inconvenience and the health hazard and the risk face and the breach of duty on your part, I want to offer on the table that based on the fact that we have a strong case, even though we want to avoid trial, mm -hmm. that's my client's interest, um, that you just waive the two months rent. Our client is... Well, and I also, I don't, I think the point of having, so with the repairs and having someone come and view the, the apartment, mm -hmm. look at the water damage and the, the mold, I, I don't think we're, it, our client's exactly saying that there wasn't an enjoyable use of the apartment. I think that's also up to the the, the, the professional to ascertain that we're going to the, the agreed upon third party. So I don't think that we're exactly in the same place regarding the enjoyable use of the, the apartment. So I don't think that we're, our client's in the position to agree to waive the past two months rent. Well, our clients have waited for more than one month for the repairman. And the repairman tell me it's now actually a second living area. So my clients live in that, that, that apartment without, without any safe or comfortable environment. So why do our clients need to pay anything for that two months? Well, for a couple reasons. So first of all, your clients, as I understand it, aren't currently in a lease. They've just been paying month to month since your since your client's grandmother unfortunately passed away. Melvin allowed them to stay and took month to month. He could have gotten twice the rent if he decided not to let your client stay there. There's never been any other issues for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and I just say that to establish that this has been a good relationship. Melvin's been a good landlord. There's never been any other issues. So the fact that there's any sort of, like, so yes, there's been mold for a couple of months, but on four and a half years, that doesn't seem worth waiving the back pay that these people have in good faith been paying Melvin month to month um, because he quite frankly would like some back pay and has other options if your client refuses to do so. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I will agree with you, not on the point of enjoyable use, because it's debatable if the daughter with the respiratory illness is now having a flare-up as a result of the condition of their apartment. But I will agree with you on the on the point of good faith and the long-standing history of the relationship that they've had. I will agree there. Um, and further to that, I would like to give another offer. So we take the first one on the table and we would pay 75% discounted. And our client would pay this over three months. Of the back pay? Of the back pay. Of the two months of, of the rent? Two months. 75% of the two months owed. Yes. So that would be um, $288 in equal parts over the span of three months. 
Okay. So breaking that two month, breaking 75% of the two month payments over three months. Yes, $96 a month. Tacked on to rent going forward. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in that same vein, well, I guess I should ask um, if your client does want to stay, mm -hmm. like that, that certainly sounds appealing, but if your client does want to stay, in the interest of full transparency, our client, given the demand for the area, given the demand for his building and the rents in the area, he is looking to increase the rent. Now, does that complicate the situation? Does that in any way decrease your client's um, desire to stay? Because just to be upfront, he, he is very interested in increasing the rent. Yes, uh, she would rather to have the rent stay at 1,150. Okay, if he did increase the rent, would your client leave or would they be willing to stay? Well, we weren't advised on that. We are only advised to say that she would be leaving if the health risk was not addressed. But that's definitely something that we would have to go back and speak with our client about. Okay. I just bring it up because our client did say that if we do come to an agreement where your client does end up staying in the in the apartment, we will need more rent because we are just increasing. We're increasing rents, quite frankly. So here, our client will make three per job. If, if your client to repair the whole apartment and make the everything down, yeah, we can we can talk about the increase in rent. But so out, since before the repairment, our client is not sure what would the apartment become. So well, right. we're not really sure about the increase. Well, it would be contingent upon the repairs being fixed, of course, because if we don't hold up our end of the bargain, you don't have to hold up your end of the bargain. So if the repairs get fixed, the new repairman comes in, the mold is resolved, mm -hmm. I, w I want you to be advised that our client does intend to increase the rent because of the demand in the area, and quite frankly. All right, so just by way of um, keeping clear of why we're here today, we're here to talk about the back rent. So let's um, settle on the back rent, and then we could always um, each of us go back to our clients and then talk about if the back rent is cleared up, if the repairs, necessary repairs are made, how do we then move forward to say um, about the future rent. Is that fair? Yes, but I understand that you want to address the main issues, but I just looking at the bigger picture. picture Definitely. When the, when the back rent is addressed, and it, let's say everything's great and everybody's happy, our client do doesn't want things to go back to normal. He yeah. wants rent to go up. So if everything is resolved, that does kind of affect where we go from there. Because like if everything is resolved and then your client still is paying eleven fifty, our client is I mean, not yeah. happy. So that's a new. So I'm trying to address that issue now. But I understand it's you know lower priority. I just want to give you a heads up. Okay. Um, All right. No problem. Yeah. Um, I, do we, do we have, sorry, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I'll definitely bring back um, the rent increase to my client. Can you tell me uh, if she does agree and if she does still want to stay, how much increase that would be? It's double, but go up to uh, 2300 a month. So it would be the rent fee after repairment? That would be the new rent, the going, new forward. rent going forward on a month to month basis. 2300 a month. $2,300 a month. So are we agreeing on the 75% discount over three months? Um, yes, for the back pay. For yes. the back pay, yes. Right. And then right. because I wasn't advised on the rent increase, and I would bring this back to my client, and then we can reconvene at a mutually um, convenient time. Okay. To discuss this further, is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. One yeah. second. Would you like us to take a two minute recess? Two minutes. Oh. Two minutes, take a break. Well, we're good. I, we just had a discrepancy about the rent okay. increase number, but it's not, a, it's not a, a huge deal because we'll discuss so, that later. So, I, so based on the $2,300 figure for the increase of rent, so I understand that so you're not comfortable with the $2,300 going, the rent going up? No, I don't have any feelings about it because I wasn't advised as to rent increase. However, mm -hmm. I will go back to my client at another time mm -hmm. um, after we're finished with this meeting and I will get more instructions and we can reconvene negotiations based on the rental increase. Okay. Um, but, okay. That's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, 
That sounds good. I know you're not at liberty to accept a rent increase offer. Or deny. Or deny, right. So well, I guess we'll just, all right, that sounds good. We'll just table that for now. Um, and our client also hopes to pay the rent in four months. Is that okay for your client? The pay the back rent. I thought it was three months, or three months. Eight, four months. Four months? Yes. 75% of the two months owed over four months. No. I mean, I mean, I hope because our client he has paid for the furniture, but he will pay to the he will pay to the apartment with the furniture. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. I mean, I mean, our client he needs to get some money to get to pay the pay those rent. So no. I think I think what Cole Council is saying is I think he's amending the offer that I initially put on the table to say seventy five percent over instead of over three months over four months. Oh, uh, I guess we'll take it back, but I don't see any real issue with that. Yeah, I mean, if our client would prefer the three months just because it's a shorter timeline, but and okay. In that event, we we can agree on three months. Okay. Seventy five percent over three months and um also that the repairs will be done by a new person who is up to standard mm -hmm. and mutually agreed upon so i think i think we made progress here and it was good it was pleasant how do you feel about it we feel good i do want to just reiterate that i know that you can agree to an increased rent but mm -hmm. i want your client to please understand that an increased rent will happen mm -hmm. the number we don't know about the number but just so they understand that this is all contingent upon them agreeing to paying more rent, whatever that number is, mm -hmm. paying more rent is part of this agreement. It's just, just, it's just the number we don't know about yet. Okay, okay. no problem. Right. And we can reconvene at a mutually convenient time right. and we'll be able to discuss it further. Okay, okay. anything else? No. All right, okay. sounds good. We'll be in touch. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Good talking to you. You too. Thank you. So that was a wrap. How do you feel about it? Really, really great. <laughs> I feel really great too. I just want to be happy and smile and laugh. Yeah. I, as you know, as you said, we felt as though that yeah, round really wrapped up. Point. Yeah, and it really wrapped up quickly in comparison to yeah. the first round that we did. In fact, out of expectation. Mm -hmm. It exceeded your expectation. Yeah, it's so fast. <laughs> it was really fast and. Um, fast. I cannot believe that. And I'm proud of the results because based on what our client wanted, we were able to secure that. And I believe that our client would be happy in this scenario. And for issues that we raised, that they raised, that we weren't prepared for, we were like, oh, we weren't advised about that. So we'd have to take that back to our client before we're able to enter an agreement concerning those matters. I think, I think that kind of um, tipped them a little bit because they weren't expecting that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll let you know if we advance to the semifinals. Uh, we should know tonight if we advance to the semifinal, and then you can stay tuned for the rest of the competition.